what we can do, guys, is if you look at this, now we're going to talk about the asymptotes, rational, uh, or horizontal asymptote in a second. But one thing I remember, guys, is remember you can divide polynomials into other polynomials, right? Is this something we could divide into them? Yes. Maybe? I mean, they both have the same degree, right? So, I mean, kind of the same thing like, you know, if you had y is equal to, you know, 12x over 3x, that's just the same thing as saying 4x, right? So why don't we try to divide it and see what it looks like? I mean, why not? What do we got to lose, right? We don't know what this graph looks like right now anyways. So I'm going to use long division. You could use synthetic division, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Okay, it's just usually quicker this way. It's not going to be too much. How many times is 2x divided into 4x? Uh, two times. 2 times 2x is 4x. <laughs> Always got to get the same answer. 2 times 1 is positive 2. Remember to group and subtract. Negative 3 minus 2. Negative 3 minus 2 is going to be a negative 5. You owe me 5. If you borrow $3, if you owe me $3, right, negative, you owe, and you borrow two more dollars, you owe me $5. Um, but does 2x divide into negative 5? No. No. So therefore, that is our remainder. Now, last class period, we were all concerned about the remainder. Right? We all talked about the remainder, like there is no remainder, because we always had factors. We always had polynomials that evenly divided into other polynomials. But that's not going to be the case in, this, in these examples. So does anybody know what we do with this remainder? Yeah? Divisor. Divisor. Right. So we can actually rewrite this as the full quotient like this. Now, now use that to graph. Use that to graph. Right, because this is the same as that. Okay. That's the same answer, right? Y is equal to 12 over, let's do it this way. Y is equal to 12x, or let's just do 12 over 5. Isn't that the same thing as um, 12 goes into divide 2 plus 2 fifths? Right? It's the same thing. It's like you can write it that way or you can write it that way. Right? So all we're doing is we're just dividing our we're just dividing them to get a different answer. But that is our quotient. And guess what? Do we does this look a little bit more familiar to us? Yeah. A little bit more familiar to us, right? We don't really like that B there, but that's okay. So now I don't really like this number in front. So I'm gonna rewrite it like this. Negative five over two x plus one plus two. Well, now I know my asymptotes, right? And I can easily find my x and y intercepts. Easily find my x and y intercepts. So let's first identify my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote, guys, is, again, the transformations. Don't say to the left one. Right? You've got to factor out the 2. How'd you get 1 half? 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 half is 1. Okay, so it's not as nice as the last one we did. But our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 1 half, because the graph is being shifted to the left 1 half. My horizontal asymptote, the graph is being shifted up 2, so it's now at y is equal to 2. Again, the reflections and the vertical stretch are not affecting my asymptotes. They affect the graph, but they're not affecting the asymptotes. Okay? Now, to find the x-intercept and y-intercepts, we can now utilize something that's going to save us time. Do you guys remember the work I did on the last one, like solving the x-intercept? Like it was kind of yeah. a lot of work, right? So you could do that again. You could plug 0 in for y and try to solve for x. But couldn't you do this equation as well? Yeah. Right? And again, this is where our shortcuts is going to come in. So I'm going to do this one last time for you. But then from now on, after this, after this example, I'm going to stop doing it. So again, instead of using this equation, we can just use this one. If I have a rational expression equal to 0, I need to get this off the denominator. So you multiply on both sides. Anything, equal to, anything multiplied by 0 is just 0. And this divides to 1. So guess what? Every single time you're trying to find the x-intercept, you're setting y is equal to 0. When you have a rational expression equal to 0, just set the numerator equal to 0. Don't go, you don't have to go through all these steps. 
you can to physically understand it. But the quick, easy way to do this is just set the numerator equal to 0. Right, because it's going to go 0, and that divides to 1. So we get x equals 3 fourths. And now to find the y-intercept, can I plug 0 in for x? And then remember those fraction operations? People are like, I don't want to do fractions, right? Some of you looked at that, you're like, oh, crap, negative 5. Like, ugh, I don't want to do fractions. Look what happens when I plug 0 in for here. That goes to 0, that goes to 0. What am I left with? Zero. Constant over the uh, constant. So this one is just y is equal to negative 3 over 1 equals negative 3. So it's nice. When you have an equation like this, it's nice to be able to divide it so you can quickly and easily understand the asymptotes, where those asymptotes are. And then, um, but then to find the x and the y-intercepts, I would prefer using the original equation. Okay.